let me tell you how much I like cover art. Be it a book, album or a game, I can always appreciate a good box design. Something that pulls you instantly with just a quick glimpse. It can be beautiful, weird or just simply well made. And while the perfect cover might not exist, there's a lot out there that I can enjoy for a diverse number of reasons. This was probably a trait that I unconsciously developed for the simple reason that, while growing up, my parents didn't see video games in the best of lights, so all I had back then were gaming magazines or the usual retail browsing, looking through their covers and wondering how the games were beyond the screenshots in the back. Don't get me wrong, there's nothing bad with a simple and safe cover design. Some of my favorite games don't have the most interesting choices in that regard, because in the end, this really doesn't matter much to the actual game experience. But to me, it's the difference between a product shot in a studio with a flight light and a photo made by someone who cares, something that has a story behind it. And to this day, it's something that I'm still interested about, especially in this age of digital storefronts, where the appreciation for the cover art kind of fell off in the favor of a quick trailer search. A fair warning though, the quality on some of these scans is not that great, so uh, get that in mind when you can start counting the pixels. Let's start with a classic one, a solid choice on where to begin with all of this. Already, it's easy to see why this is a good one, as it mostly takes inspiration from the works of an actual painter, Giorgio de Chirico, an Italian artist from the early 20th century and godfather of surrealism. Right away, it's easy to draw the connections between the two, with the warm strokes of sunset drawing harsh shadows from the angular man-made structures. The emptiness of the world in comparison to the size of the human figures, it tells you exactly about the core experience and what the game is all about. Exploration. Also puzzles. A lot of puzzles, actually. While well, they're constantly cock-blocked by shadows, also trying to get that sweet royal puss. But that's besides the point. I just love how the sky shifts into a subtle black. It blends really well with the black label that PS2 games had and works towards making it part of the old picture. Also. An extra point for the clean arrangement and the lack of the unrelated logos, which sometimes gets comically out of proportion in some covers. I know that it's hard to avoid as this is above all a commercial product, but come on, put that in the back cover or something. A shame that this stronger artistic angle wasn't pursued in further entries of the series. They kinda did it again for the menu of the HD collection, but I wish they had done it for a reversible cover or something. Here's one that some of you might know, if not the wrong version. A classic case of the West getting a bigger focus on the action, with a lazy composition of character renders in different opacities all over the frame. Even with Secret of Mana, where the sense of scale is lost by the conversion from vertical to horizontal, at least they still use the original artwork, as in this case, what was lost was just an amazing piece. Like even the logo with the sun shining in the middle of the characters, presenting the dawn break, the concept seems to have been completely lost in the process. But what an incredible cover it is, by the hands of series illustrator Irui Sono. If you ever got the time, I recommend looking at his other works, as it's definitely worth checking out. Saturation of green, leaving you lost amid the sprawling, natural life, just enough space for the sky to peek out with its soothing night sky, soon to be ending. The stars still peeking through its countless branches, it's amazing and definitely deserving the spot of one of my favorites. I'm not saying that action poses are all bad, this one's pretty good, and it takes well to how elegantly slim the PSP boxes were. There's not much loss from the original artwork, and you got all the elements tightly fit in with some great decision on color. It's rare for the foreground elements to be covered in cold tones, leaving the background to old, old warm colors, but it looked great. And that dynamic logo with the flame and the sky gradients that maintain the color scheme, really good stuff. A shame that this only reminds me of how that Breath of Fire is, especially after that last mobile thing. Maybe one day Capcom will remember and do something about it, right after Darkstalkers. What can I even say about this one? Yes, it is better than its overseas counterpart, that's for sure. The weight just rips from the top like a single stroke of a brush. The highlights are mostly gold, making the fury be felt by the great use of color shading. It's incredible how you can make so much with what should be just an art. 
that title is not even sure about what it is. Cracking under the weight of the bold letters that compose it, sharing the same glow of the mythical God Hand. Ever heard of Toro? The cute little white cat that is Sony mascot over in Japan? Somehow, he managed to have some games of his own, so he's one of them. Now, I know what you're thinking, but funny enough, he was created first, even before the original N64 release of Animal Crossing. <laughs> so no, he wasn't kidnapped from Nintendo. I hope. Anyway, I never played any of his games, as they were mostly Japan exclusive, but he does appear a lot as a guest character in other series, one of them being Tokyo Jungle. Go play Tokyo Jungle, it's a pretty cool game where you can fight bears with a domestic cat. Still, it is a nice cover with that soft tone of blue on the blocky texture background. And just look how happy he is. This has to be a pretty comfy adventure. And here he is again, just walking around all smug. Where is he even going, that crazy cat? Even if it seems lazy, I do enjoy these composite images where they draw or put a 3D model over a real life photo, especially when used with these mundane scenarios. It brings a strange sense of comfort, even in a place like this where I've never been. It seems to fit well with the layback nature of the setting, making a relaxing game to go through. A perfect fit for the cute look of the character, wouldn't you say? Like, come on, this is just awesome. The amount of detail in the flashy palette, apparently the art style, seems like an evolution or a spin off of Fully Cooling. Punk journal covered in bright colors, giving the slight sense of innocence. This is just something you can feel the pure passion behind it. It has this childish fantasy feeling to it, like a kid drew up everything that he thinks is cool. And the fact that you can see the flaws, like in the corner over there, where the markers fail to completely color everything, just makes it that much more authentic. It's incredible how the entire thing has this creative freedom to it, something that even the logo plays a part in, building up to a spectacular cover illustration. Definitely a strong art style that carries over to the PS2 graphics perfectly, that I recommend everyone to try it out. Ha! Huh, would you look at that! They finally made a game about being American. Not much to say about this one. The light and dark motif is rarely a unique concept, but the sharp, geometric duality on this does look pretty cool, something that even the company logo managed to be a part of. You know what? It's a good thing that even with their differences, they both share their love for that dang kush. The other regions have really lost this treasure of a cover. The light shining on the mural with the wolf's fur blending in with the man's hair. What a perfect way to represent the shape-shifting ability that made Bloody Roar so cool. And that edgy logo made out of blood, with some random geometric lines under it, makes it that much funnier next to the Edson mascot. Hyper Beast Duel! Highlander is a great game, but this box art really elevates it to the next level. With a simple x-ray of a hand in a cold, ghostly tone of blue, it's a clever abstract way to reference the single arm from the player's ship. I really can't think of a better way to make this one. Or do I? So good it's not even for sale. Something about the destruction of the airplane and the warm afternoon sun provides a strange comfort that really makes this one special. The warping of the title also offers a refreshing take of what could have been just a basic logo. And for all I know, it could have been related to what happens in the game, which unfortunately was a Japanese exclusive. On the topic of strange comfort, there's another one that certainly dwells on the unknown melancholy. The barely visible garden, the mostly stone-cold surroundings, and the cloudy skies all fail to instantly grab the attention in comparison to the striking red of the lonesome lady, and only plea written in the same bright color. And forget you, I will not, as I wonder what burden you carry as you grow distant from us. Don't get me wrong, I love the standard wireframe look that the early Genesis and Mega Drive boxes had. But what a shame that the overseas version cuts off so much from the complete artwork. You can barely see most of the monsters, and the whole reason why the Beast Man is so angry in the first place. 
Just trying to rescue Athena from the evil Neff. <laughs> Neff. Who the hell cares about this? Wait, that was him in Wreck-It Ralph? Riddle me this. If hamburger is so good, why is there no hamburger too? Oh. Well then, if sex is so good... I do miss the overwhelming amount of high fantasy that came out during the late 80s and early 90s. There is just something pure in the adventures of a cool swordsman, evil dragons and scantily clad women, and this cover manages to be a pretty good representation of it all. The stylized logo in bright red, adorned with the elegant details underneath, greatly presents the beautiful rendition of the characters that are framed by the long red scarf, all painted in a rich spectrum of warm colors. So much is going on that you might miss the great anime ass. It's like a little treat for those who stuck around and took their time to look at the illustration. Well, on the topic, I can't talk about Brandish without mentioning the great Jun Suemi, the illustrator that made a name for himself in the RPG genre back in the 90s. From the sequel on forward, all the cover art was done by him, and right away you can understand why he was so well known. Choosing to focus on the characters, he made the background a simple blend of colors while letting the composition speak for itself. Even between the various entries, you would always apply a strong heaven motive. Surrounding the characters in bright clouds of light, displayed in poses to accentuate their traits of valor and virtue. Also, you might have noticed the big focus on the female body, never shy of presenting their allure front and center, with all the women represented in the peak of their physical form. Long story short, that's pretty damn hot. On a completely non-related side note, let me show you the cover for one of the series' music albums. Which I felt I was important to show, because, you know. And Swami didn't stop there. Not only dabbling on fantasy, he also tackled sci fi, with an equally amazing quality as always. Even in the mechanical designs, his shading is a whole different level, playing in the fiction and the real, a kind of hybrid, if you might. On this one, the old box design doesn't get left behind either without seems to be the contacts of a cartridge displayed around the box, giving that techno feeling that complements well the main artwork. Even when comparing to Kojima and their contribution to the Castlevania series, this is a great vampire team painting. The opulent figure standing on top of the burning hell spawn contrasts really well with the fragile beauty of the woman in his arms with all of it confined to an appropriate blood-red frame. A cover aside, I just want to point out how the protagonist went to literally fight Dracula looking like this, and with nothing but his bare fists. What a man. Later, he would also work on another vampire-related game, with this one having a bit more action going for it, with what seems to be the protagonist waiting to throw hands. Sometimes you gotta show those vampires who's boss. The gradient colors smoothly covering the moon in the deep purple fits really well, helping further define the silhouette of the antagonist perched over every character. Don't know about the corner coins though, but I guess it makes more sense for someone who has played the game. Maybe that's what they're paying him to punch the vampire. This, this time, time, it's, it's not, not personal. personal. A man, a man just, just has, has to, to pay, pay rent. rent. I can respect that. Back to classical fantasy. He started to dabble on creature designs, using demonic entities to experiment on more interesting ideas while still keeping human anatomy as a base. The girl does look a bit weird out of place, not drawing the bow at full strength, and after finding the full illustration, it's even weirder how they obscured another character behind the logo. I know it's stupid trying to correct art, but I would prefer it if it was just the creature and the front character aligned. Here's a half-assed job of what I meant. Anyway, it still looks great but the logo is just badly placed. All of this was only just an excuse to talk about Rengoku. This series is so cool, why did it have to die so soon? Definitely deserve at least a home console release. Anyway, look at the design. Taking inspiration from the style of old studies of anatomy by such minds like Leonardo da Vinci. Dissecting the subjects beyond their flesh to see how they worked. Jolting down notes on everything they found. It's a fantastic idea for the game that has you exchanging body parts for stronger and deadlier ones. I recommend it for everyone that might hold an interest on why that's just presented. And even if the awkward gameplay puts you off, at least try the sequel, which is a bit more polished. 
This is just a normal JRPG, but set in the Wild West, where the Shill and Balum collection of prophetic books play a big role in the plot. Luckily, there's no need to know any of this to enjoy the cover. With its cast of characters in front of a bonfire beneath the full moon, dark skies looming while serving as a background for a Mayan figure in bright red. Overall, it's an incredible illustration, and while I want to attribute the work to Suemi, I can't seem to find the confirmation for it beyond the similar looking art style. There really should be more Wild West RPGs, it has been a while since the last Wild Arms, and that is an aesthetic that should be more common. The excessive use of red for stunning images of violence is a solid concept, one that works well with the deep blue on the character in focus, standing as a force that calmly opposes all of it. Again, can't find the artist for this one, which is a shame because I really like the art style. Can't go wrong with the 90s anime babe, so here's a complimentary image from the game. Look, what I'm trying to say is that a woman with full eyebrows is pretty hot. Also the uniforms. The uniforms really help. There. That's my point. <gasps> now take a look at this lion. He was supposed to be the coward one, but he just seems high. Hell, they all seem high. He just looks like some type of showcase on all the types of people you can be while on drugs. Tin Man does have wheelies on his feet and a pocket collar, so at least he can roll down the yellow brick road looking sick. This one isn't much better. Everyone is pretty much scared stiff. <laughs> and this Tin Man looks like he's about to fuck some shit up at the first chance that he gets. I don't remember what they encounter in their journey that needs a weapon, but damn man, that man will get a heart one way or the other. This was a lucky one. At the first glance, it looks like your typical licensed game, but it's actually an original take on the classic novel as a JRPG. It's like the type of thing that would stay as an exclusive in Japan, but Axeed was pretty based back then and brought it over to the West. While this cover is pretty cute, the real gem is the Japanese original, at least ignoring the weird title that is supposed to be an anagram of Wizard and House. The design is pretty cool though, and so is the rest of the box, with its dynamic presentation of the characters, aptly and carefree into their journey. Even the enemies seem like they could be great pals. Really makes you wish to go on an adventure as well, doesn't it? While I'm doing this old thing just to show covers, I can also recommend this one if you think this is a neat idea or you just love the art style. Pretty average cover, right? You got the ninja and the cool wolf doing dynamic poses, jumping up from the Statue of Liberty. It's all pretty radical. But what if you need to adapt this to other regions? Nope. This is just Detroit. The more you look at it, the better it gets. What is even happening here? Is that supposed to be a ninja? Is that old man hurting or saving the woman? And is he a wizard? Because he looks like a wizard on his day off. And you must be asking, what is even the wolf dog? <laughs> wow, that is one scared dog. He doesn't want none of what is happening here. Final score though, 10 out of 10. That's not fair, the Mega Drive does have some cool covers. The evolution from Master System's white background to a slick black one looks great, especially while the main illustration is placed upon it with some slick lines to give space for the logo. As for the illustration, more of a stylized piece, it's a strong representation of this arcade classic. Even if you didn't know about OutRun, you understand instantly what it's all about. The fast sports cars and bright colors, racing at high speeds in a beautiful exotic landscape. Conveniently, all put together on a well tarred road. Man, I find that last part harder to believe than me owning a Ferrari. It's just the kind of world I live in, I guess. Anyway, just ignore the fact that everyone in this picture is a ginger. Must be one of those tropical bitches down in Alabama. The choice of colors is pretty good, with the starry sky being tinted blue to contrast with the explosion of purple light. I still wonder if I'll live long enough to see such a ridiculous thing become commonplace. Or if it's only a thing of fiction. I don't know how I feel about the pixelated borders. I could go either way on those. But damn, this illustration. Just don't think too much about why the man is sitting on a huge floating ring. And marvel at the bigger picture. Those fancy boots and the ornate skirt. This man is ready for some adventure. 
the misty valley painted in soft tones of purple, the castle, radiant from the slight sunlight that manages to break through the clouds. It's all very well executed, and I could easily mistake this for some kind of spin-off from The Lord of the Rings. It's that beautiful. The Killing Game Show, or uh, Fatal Rewind, as it's known in the Mega Drive, it's a game that had the luck of having a cool name, whatever version it was. The original box illustrations are good enough on their own, but it's the Japanese release, with a blend of both that really makes it something special. The artwork of one that started to look like the eye of the other, with the added depth from the 3D illusion of the robot, gives it such a shilling feel. It's definitely the best of all, in my opinion. And it only helps that the original illustration is by none other than Roger Dean, who I will talk about further in the future. I own this game and I didn't even know about it, and that is mostly because the western version looks like this. This is a perfect example of why I love the original execution from Japan. They don't seem to have a problem on going full eccentric on shaping their ideas, and that might be the result of not being aware of all the minutia from their culture. The western version always seemed weird to me, some sort of hastily made product that got hit with some development issues, but no, the game already had a funky design that was completely removed from the original. Take a look at the title screen. Strange use of colors, the mix of English and Japanese, the weird background, it all feels so alien and hostile. And the pre-release preview is even more macabre, with a burnt in red and blue on the screen, the you unsure of what setting of the game even is, and I can help but love it. Back for something more classic, what a gorgeous illustration. This one is credited to one Masatoshi Izumi, but I can't seem to find any other work from the same artist, which might indicate a pseudonym. A shame, because I would love to see more art like this. I miss the simplicity of these fantasy designs. Just a leotard, some cloth around your wrists as sweatpants, some big ass shoulder pads, and you're ready to kill God right after the aerobics class. The sharp designs of the creatures contrasting with the elegant silhouette of Alyssa, the background composition painted in pastel colors, leading the attention to the circle of the center, and finishing with a strong impact with the darkness presented inside. The only thing that I don't understand is why they thought it was a good idea to ruin all of that with just a random screenshot at the bottom, and if I really got a complaint, then the logo could be a bit more elaborate, or at least easier to read. Known in the West as Trasia, this game is infamous for being not that good, but hey, at least we got something good out of it. Without even needing to get into detail, you can see why this is a wonderful painting. The dawn breaking through the horizon, with the cliffs bathed with the last shades of the night, while the protagonist looks at the pendant, connected by a glint to its beautiful close-up rendition. And even if the pendant wasn't present, the color palette, focusing in mostly blues and subtle greens, gives off this overwhelming sentiment of melancholy, with the protagonist's pose being enough to illustrate the overall mood of the cover. Unfortunately, I can't confirm with the cover, but the character designer is Mahiru Maeda, who has an impressive curriculum to say the least, so maybe also did this one too. I gotta say, that is pretty metal, but it does bother me how the illustration is slightly off-center. Like you got the PlayStation version, and it's perfectly positioned, but it had that old Konami thing of putting the genre at the bottom, which usually ruins the composition, the background being pure white for some reason too. At the same time, the Saturn one still has more problems. The Konami logo in a pure white box, obscuring part of the illustration, the black bar in the bottom, cuts the flare from the tip of the sword, adding up to a bunch of small things that could have been easily corrected. I never played Bandle Hearts, but whatever is going on with this dragon skeleton, pierced with a sword through its rusty clockwork insides, is something I definitely rock with.
Yeah. This Panther Fox. Yeah, okay, this one is really about America. But with a giant pachinko ball with legs looking to make it big in the old US of A. How is the geisha throwing a giant dice or the evil gambling machine fit into that? I don't know. But if the land of the free is not all about that, then gosh darn it, I've been living a lie since I was born. You know what's pretty cool? There I am. Well, this one doesn't go for that, staying with a simple 3D render of a somewhat common in game occurrence. The sequel makes it count. And they could have made it cute like the Japanese covers, but no, this one goes full horror with a jumping lobster thing and a Pikmin in a panic, which I guess is appropriate, the game is pretty stressful at times, but damn. And you might think, European box is a bit better, with a Pikmin just chilling while still maintaining the clay model look. Until you look at the background and oh god! But on the topic of small scale on the GameCube, it's Shibi Robo. I can't be sure, but it seems that this is just a composition photo, so it doesn't add that real world feel to it. But still, it's a pretty cute cover that conveys the setting of the game pretty well. Funny enough, the Japanese cover is exactly the same, but Shibi Robo isn't holding the plug, instead caught in the middle of work while carrying a piece of crumpled paper. At least they managed to also put the little outlets integrated into the title. Nice details like that go a long way. It's not that elaborate, but still, it's a pretty good clay model with an equally made natural life surrounding it. A shame about the sequel just adopting a basic illustration, but at least the art style is nice, with a strong outline and simple color shading. Man, just the amount of love put into this one. I can't really tell if it's a real photo of a clay diorama, or just a style to look like it, but I love this one. Look at these dudes in here, just big guys on top of a beak, and a chicken with a farmer's hat. And the little houses. We just know that this game is pure comfy. Reminds me that I always found it a shame that Harvest Moon never evolved, or at least gave away to a spiritual sequel with a clay out style. Seems like something that would look really good with a nature setting. I'm growing them up a whole bunch. I decided, I decided to, go to go on a long, long trip, trip to find. find. Pong. Pong. I'm gonna I'm say, gonna so, say to so to grandpa, grandpa and go. go. Pong. Pong. A curious, a curious animal, animal that we that don't, we don't see, see much. much. I don't know, I don't know where they are. are. I don't know, I don't what, know they what they eat. eat. This very this shy, shy animal, animal is Pong. Pong. But many, many people, people dislike them lately. lately. <laughs> oh wow, yeah, okay, I guess we can go that route if you want. Just look at that little cute face and the first thing you think is <laughs> Racism. Here we have a game about a boy getting his driver's license so he can date girls. Seems pretty relatable. A simple diorama but filled to the brim with personality. With a bare range of characters, the multiple street signs, the cartoon look with its exaggerated proportions and flashy colors. It all works together to create a fun cover, something that transfers well to the 2D style that it's used in the game and in the back of the box. A shame that I can find a better scan for this one, as I would like to zoom in to see all the detail of the models. These two might be shitting, as they're based on an old Japanese puppet show, but they still look pretty interesting. Makes me wonder about what the show is about. Most likely just simple stories for kids, but still, it's pretty fun. Here are some quick ones for a series that didn't get that famous in the West. The paper collage mixed in with the classic Japanese style looks really cool, and I'm certain there is a lot of references that I'm not aware of, but I can still appreciate the quality of it all. Unfortunately, same can be said about Konami though. Pack. Pack. In. 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 Soft. 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 No man, we only pack it hard in here. Listen. I love Harvest Moon, especially the first ones in the series, and there isn't a better way to represent the warm feeling that the game radiates. The logo made out of wood, the framing of the character, the soft colors, and the background painted in with the coloring markers simulating the individual blades of grass is all a great combination. Certainly something that I haven't seen being replicated since.
Like Pikmin, the funky characters placed around common household item is a really fun design. It gets you thinking about what is up with these little dudes. Fun tidbit, the character artist for this is also the author of Made in Abyss, but this one does manage to be a bit more lighthearted. And for some reason, Europe decided to switch the title for something even more stupid. LDs? LDs DUT? I'm going to get you! Watch out! Okay, let's go. Ha ha ha! What a funny show! The clay models on these are so expressive, and the very strong colors really establish well a wonderful first impression, with even the logo looking great, with those chunky clay characters that make it look like a tasty cake. The unique look only being reinforced by the dynamic framing of the comic panel that contain all of it. It really is amazing how it all turned out to be when you consider that the original western version looks something like this. <laughs> I like the diorama look, and this one seems like it took a long time to build, but damn, that thing is just way too spooky to be in the center. Yeah, at least take the photo at an angle or something, give me some time to deal with it. That logo though, with the sword handle and the guard from the X, adding to the already fancy exotic font, it's pretty damn cool. This is not much of a classic real-life diorama, but with the game being a stage play acted out by puppets, with a charming 3D render to showcase it, I guess it can still count. This is one of those rare cases where the early 3D limitations complement well with the cartoony look of the characters. Also, making the back of the box just a different perspective of the same scene is a genius idea to save on work. Makes me wonder why they didn't use this one for the western release, as they loved to put 3D on everything back then to show how advanced their technology was. Man, I miss Treasure and their style of games, and it's kinda sad that they only exist now to release Ikaruga to every platform nowadays. At least put all of your other games too. Where is the Radiant Silo gun? Or Alien Soldier? What about Mischief Makers? And Light Crusader? I love Light Crusader! And Gunstar Heroes? Even the Advanced Guardian Heroes is pretty cool on its own right. And Stretch Panic? What about Sin and Punishment? And Silhouette Mirage and Manga Yo! Well, here we are. This is that last part of the video where I just go completely off script and comment a bit on my thoughts on the video. I do gotta say, I appreciate you watching the video until the end. It means a lot to me. This was the first time that I edited something, and I'm pretty proud of it. I know that I got a, a lot of space to grow and I still think that I could have done better in some parts, especially the voice part. I'm not used to recording my voice. It's a strange thing, but I, I think I'll like it. Thank you, and see you next time.